Well, welcome to Hillsong Celebrate Recovery. I'm so glad each and every one of you are here tonight. Hope you've had a good week. Hope you've seen the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God this week through ups and downs, through challenges, the trials, and tribulations. He's always faithful. Amen. My name is Cam. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. So thankful that Jesus loved me, shed his blood on the cross for my sin. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. That's something to be excited about, something to celebrate. Also grateful for what he's done through my habits, hurts, and hang-ups. Mine were anger, anxiety, and depression, just to name a few. And still working on some other things. Got some challenges in my life. I'm sure you've got some challenges in yours, but God continually works on us. Kind of like that construction out there on Mason Drive that will never end. Right? <laughs> we're working in progress. All right? Amen. So, hey, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about, and we've gotten this journey kind of kicked off again as far as the celebrate uh, the, the road to recovery and we've talked about a couple of things we had we had to start a little bit it's a little bit tough of this this recovery journey right we first have to look at denial denial is not fun it's not easy right it's not the easiest step in the world it's not easy to say boy the way that i've been doing things is not good the way that i've been doing things causes hurt causes habits it it, it doesn't work out well it hurts relationships and so we've got to look at that. that that's a tough little step to, to go through. And then, of course, we, we have to realize then that we're powerless, right? We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, that our sin nature has made us powerless. That's what's, that's what's driven us to, to do our own thing, to do our own way, to go against God's design for our, for our lives, right? And so now we, we kind of, we've had a couple of tough steps. But I love the way CR puts things together because they, they create these pillars every couple of steps. It's just kind of they're, they're the glue and they, they kind of hold everything together. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about hope. So this is lesson three. And we're going to move to principle number two, which is earnestly believe that God exists, that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. Of course, the verse is Matthew 5, 4. Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And then step two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. So that's that's what we're doing tonight. We're, we're on uh, lesson number three. And, uh, you know, just kind of, again, taking a look at the journey thus far and now taking a look at, uh, you know, first the denial, then the then the powerlessness and then hope. Right. And so we need to be careful. You can't just cover the bottomless pit of your hurts, habits, and hang-ups without, with layers of denial or try some quick fix. CR is not a quick fix. This is not a, you know, I know we live in a, a fast generation where we want to get the information quickly. We want to get through things and, and move along quickly. We want to progress fastly, right? That's the, kind of how we all think nowadays. That's, that's modern day thinking. But this is a journey. This is something that we've got to go through. God designed this for us to walk through these things. It's not a quick fix. It's not something that we, we, uh, we do very quickly because we have to expose those hurts to the light that God, that through God's power, they can truly be healed. Because if we try to go things, through things quickly, if we try to do, do them on our own time, then that's when we don't really see that full recovery. That's when we have to go back and sometimes look back at things and say, boy, why am I still dealing with that, God? Kind of like I'm doing right now this year. I'm like, why am I still dealing with that, God? Well, it's because we, we went through it a little bit too quickly. We didn't allow that process to take its, its place in our lives. So that's so, so key. Uh, so in principle two, we come to a point where we believe God exists. And we also learn that we are important to him, that he has a plan to free us from our habits, hurts, and hangups. We talked a little bit about that in the denial part, right? We realize that God has a plan greater than we could ever, ever dream for our own selves. Just like that video showed earlier. It's greater than we could ever have for ourselves. And that's the plan that he has for us. Aren't you glad that somebody has a plan, has a dream bigger than your own? Our dreams pale in comparison to his dreams and his plans for our life. And I hope you're seeing that and I hope you're realizing that because when you do, man, that's when you can just kind of turn the, turn the wheel over to him and, and turn your trust over to him. And that's where we're headed here. So listen, God wants to fill our lives with his love and his joy because he paid the price for our sins. The Bible says we were bought with a price. It was a great price. It was a price of God's only son. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. Think of it this way. He bankrupt heaven just for you. He bankrupt heaven just for me. If there had been just one of us, he'd have done it all just for us. It's amazing to think about that. 
And he forgives us of all that we have done, all of our past, all the things that we've done, all the things that we're still maybe struggling to forgive ourselves for. He forgives us to those, for that. We all have favorite stories in the Bible. We've got ones that probably stick out that are, are, are ones that we just kind of resonate with. But I, I think probably on the top of most people's lists is the prodigal son story. And that's found in the, uh, the book, of, uh, uh, book of Luke chapter 15. And, and you know the story. It's, it's a story about a father's love for a son. And really it's a total picture of what God did for us. You kind of know the story. You've got, you've got a young man, and he says to his dad, he says, I want my inheritance now. Now, that may not sound like a big deal. That's basically saying, Dad, I, I wish you were dead because I want what I get when you die now. I mean, it's the ultimate form of, of, of spitting in their father's face, right? And he does that. And then, of course, we know what he does. He takes that money. And the Bible says he goes into another land or, or maybe the big city. I'm not sure what it is. But he goes there. And then he goes, you know, he, he goes crazy. And, and he just, he enjoys it. And hey, sin is fun for a season, right? The Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. And he enjoys that much of sin's pleasure. And then all of a sudden, things start to change, right? He realizes that all that money, all that, probably the, the guy buying drinks at the bar, the guy, you know, the, fame, the, the, the popular guy that has all the money that's, that's always picking up the tab, well, that's him, and all of a sudden the money runs out. And all of a sudden his friends just, you know, disperse, and we meet him hanging out with the pigs and eating what they eat. And that, that's when he realizes, I've got a dad that has, has so much that loves me so much, but he's so ashamed from what he's done. He says, I don't know if, if I can go back. And he, he comes all the way back. And what does the Bible say? It says the father is standing afar off, waiting for him, looking for him, waiting for his return. That's just a picture of God's grace. I think we can all relate to that as far as God having long suffering for each and every one of us. While we were off in that foreign land doing our own thing, wasting our time, wasting our money, wasting all of our efforts, our talents. All what God had put into us. And that is, that is kind of a picture of us, really. And then, of course, when we come back, we find a loving father with his arms open. What does he do? He, he opens his arms wide. He, he calls the family before he even gets back. He says, let's start a feast. My prodigal son who was gone, who left, who, who essentially spit in my face and said, I wish you were dead, dead. I want your inheritance now. Now he's come back. Let's celebrate. Let's, let's have a steak dinner. Let's have a banquet. Let's have a buffet. Let's, let's just... Let's live it up because my son is back. My child is back. And that's really what the, that's what hope is. And that's what God did for us. Hey, God's love is looking for you no matter how lost you feel. God's love is looking for you no matter how lost you feel. His love is pursuing you no matter where you are or how hard you try, tried to hide from him. He's pursuing you. God's love is searching for you. And can find you no matter how many times you have fallen into sin. Some of us know a little bit about that, right? We've come back to the Lord and, and then we, we slipped away again and we've come back. And aren't we always met each and every time by God's love? Smack dab in the face. Boy, it's like you expect rejection. You expect the, the, the book to be thrown at you. And then you get the gavel, it gets thrown out and it says, not guilty. Again, again, not guilty. God's hand of mercy is reaching out to pick you up and to love you. And forgive you even if you're having a hard time forgiving yourself God's love is there to forgive you it's amazing what to, that story and what it means and so we're going to talk about hope tonight you've got your sheets with you hope is a four-letter word it's a great four-letter word right h-o-p-e one of the best words in the English language I love it uh, hope is just such a, a you know uh, such a powerful thing so we're going to talk about h-o-p-e h means higher power it stands for higher power. Our higher power is the one and only higher power. He has a name. It's Jesus Christ. That's what makes CR so unique is that we have a higher power and we name him Jesus. Maybe you've believed in Jesus's existence. Maybe you've even attended church. You, you kind of, I think a lot of people know about Jesus. I think a lot of people kind of believe in the idea of Jesus but, you know, I tell people who, when I ask them, I said, do you believe in Jesus? Ah, maybe I said, well, he believes in you. Mm. He believes in you. Many believe Jesus is real, but what, what we find in principle, too, is, uh, is a personal relationship with Jesus. You know what the difference is between Christianity and, and every other faith out there? 
It's a relationship. We have a God that is pursuing us. You can talk about any other religion in the world, any other faith, and they have an idea, they have a philosophy, but they don't seek that their God doesn't seek to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus seeks to have a, a personal, daily, hands-on, day-to-day, moment-to-moment relationship with you and I. It's, it's designed to be an intimate relationship, to be something that, that he's, he's, the Bible says he's our father. Many of us didn't, didn't have necessarily a, 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 a normal family structure, and he's that father. He's that that loving, kind father, just like the prodigal son experienced when he came home after, after ruining everything. He's that father with his arms open wide. The Bible says in Romans eleven thirty six, everything comes from God alone. Everything lives by his, his power. The H stands for a higher power. Let me ask you, have you ever seen an idea? Have you ever seen love? We all believe in love. But have you ever seen it? Have you ever seen faith? Of course, none of these things we've ever seen, right? We've probably seen acts of faith and acts of love. But the real things, the lasting things in this world are the invisible and spiritual realities. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, My grace is enough for you, for where there is weakness, my power is shown more completely. Uh, we, we came to believe. This is, this is a process in principle, too. We came to believe. And for some people, it's, it's a hard thing to, to believe in something they haven't ever seen. But the Bible says that he gives us the power to understand, and, and he reveals himself to us. The O stands for openness to change. Openness for change. What is the process that leads to solid belief, which leads you to change your life? Well, let's look at the first four words in step uh, two. We came to believe. First of all, we came. We took the first step when we intended a recovery meeting. We came. Then we came to. We stopped denying our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. That was the denial process, right? And then we came to believe. All four words there. We started to believe and to receive God's power to help us recover. You know, so many of us think of the think of, for those that you know that you know the Lord. Think of the process that you went through to, to understand a God who loved you, to understand this concept that there was a higher power, that there was one out there that that gave His Son for me. I mean, who would do such a thing? What, what what kind of crazy love is this? It sounds reckless. We sing about that once in a while, right? It sounds like a reckless love. It sounds like something unimaginable. But it's a process. That's why the principle two says we came to believe. It took us time as God worked in our hearts and revealed himself and showed himself to us to understand this thing called hope. Hope is openness to change. And I know we can all be afraid of change. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, why we don't change and why we, we stay with those things that sometimes are, are hurting us and destroying us, right? And are taking us and, and breaking relationships in our lives. Change is hard. Change is not easy. Some people are, are early adopters and some people are, are just not easy to, to change, right? Some of us, in some things, I, I'm, I'm first in line when it comes to technology. I love to learn. I love to, to see what it does. But in other things, man, I'm, I'm like a, a stick in the mud, man. I don't want to change, you know? So, so we all have that. So we all can be afraid of change. It's painful. We can resist change because our fear of the unknown or in our despair, we think that we don't deserve anything better. There's a lot of reasons why. Here's the good news. Hope opens a door where despair closes them. Hope discovers what can be done instead of grumbling about what can't be done. Throughout your life, you will continue to encounter hurts and trials that, are, that you're powerless to change. But with God's help, you can be uh, open to allow these circumstances and situations to change you, to make you better, not bitter. To make you better, not bitter. Ephesians 4.23 says, now, uh, now your attitudes and thoughts must be all constantly changing for the better. You must be a new and different person. That's what change is about. The letter P tells us uh, that, that, it has, that we have the power to change. The power to change. In the past, we may have wanted to change and were unable to do so. We could not free ourselves from our hurts, habits, or hang-ups. In principle, too, we understand that God's power 
can change us in our situation. It's not our own power. We already tried that, right? We learned, in, Kevin taught us in, in, in principle or in step, uh, lesson two, we were powerless. We learned that then, right? So now we, we realize that it's through God's power that we can change, right? Philippians 4.13 says, For I can do everything God asked me to do through the help of Christ who gives me strength. The power to change comes from God's grace. It comes from him. Hope draws its power from a deep trust in God. Like that of the, the psalmist who wrote uh, in Psalms 25.5, Lord, teach, uh, lead me, teach me, for you are the God who gives me salvation. I have no hope except in you. Aren't you glad you have hope today? Aren't you glad there is hope today in Jesus? Principle two, we begin to understand that God's power can change us in our situation. And once we tap into that power, uh, what happens is Christ-like actions follow. And they follow naturally. They're the byproducts, the, the, the working of the principles. And that, again, is through our one true high power, Jesus Christ. Last letter is E, and that stands for expect to change. Expect to change. Hey, we got to remember we're only on the second principle. This is a journey, right? I said it right at the beginning. This doesn't, this isn't, this isn't something that's going to take, you know, just a, uh, you know, just a few weeks. This is something that sometimes we have to, you might be a little bit like me and spend a little bit of time in some principles ahead, like uh, maybe inventory and struggle a little bit there. Yeah, that took me a little bit of time. I think I camped there for a long period of time. I thought, do I ever get past this? Do I ever get past that one, one step? And then other struggle in other areas. Hey, this is a journey. We've got to walk through this whole thing. And God's here, there to, to walk us through. He's there to, through the steps and through the principles and through coming back and through, through doing the time. He's there to help us through this, this process. So E is for expect to change. With God's help, the changes that you have longed for are just steps away. Uh, Philippians 1, 6 says, I am sure that God who began the good work in you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until the task within you is finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ returns. Hey, that's the hope that we have, that he which hath begun a good work is going to continue to do it. We use that verse around here all the time. You know why? Because we're all works in progress. We're all a little bit of like Mesa Drive, right? We've got some road construction going on. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't look like there's any road construction going on, but they say that there is. <laughs> You know, you can't do anything unless you get started. So how much faith do you have right now to get started, to get on this journey? Maybe maybe you didn't join us at the very beginning and you're jumping in now. Hey, it's never too late to start this journey. This journey can start today. This journey can, you can be two weeks in, you can be two months in, you can be two years, you can be 10 years in. This journey is an ongoing journey, That that, but you've got to have faith to start it. And you don't need large amounts of faith. The Bible says you just need the faith of a mustard seed. Just a little tiny mustard seed. And that's all you need. And God says he'll use that. He'll use that. Matthew 17, 20 tells us, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move it from here, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. It's reassuring to know that you don't need lots of, of faith to begin the, the, discovery pro, or the recovery process, right? We can begin it with just a little bit of, just one small step. In fact, I, I've watched as, you know, we, we've had... Uh, services here we've had in other locations and kind of over at the other uh, family worship center we, we sometimes gather outside a little bit and I've watched those that were hesitant to go inside and they, they made that step and I, I was like watching them in the worship service are they going to walk out they're going to stay here they stayed and the next week they came back it's just that one small step and, and I watched over the weeks their countenance change their face changes God began to work in their life deal hey man this 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 program we see results in this program we see changed lives each and every day because God is at work because these steps work and this this book is true the Bible is true God's word is true I don't ever want to have a, a, a lesson like tonight without giving everyone the opportunity to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and and that could be a, a, a lot of different things. We could have we could have some tonight that are, are are a little shaky on their journey. Maybe they've already put their faith and trust in Jesus, but they need a rededication. Maybe there are those that, that just need, you know, that they've never met Jesus, and tonight is a night. So if you'd bow your head and you'd close your eyes, I just want to lead you in a simple word of prayer and essentially just ask you to repeat after me. And that, that is, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. 
I believe that you paid the price for my sin. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says if you pray a simple prayer like that and you believe it in your heart, the Bible says that he'll change your life. That everything that is in Christ becomes a new creature. The old begins to, to pass away and the all things become new. And so that's the hope that we have. And so I hope tonight that you are walking with hope. I hope that you, I hope that you have hope, right? Because it's a good thing to have. So I hope you got something out of that tonight. I hope you're blessed and uh, appreciate your time and attention. And uh, with that, I think we're going to have the...